Welcome, fellow freaks, geeks, and nostalgic peeps to my channel, Slime and Slashers, where, yeah, we talk about everything from Nickelodeon slime to horror movie slashers, but plenty of stuff in between, including books. And yeah, today is the start of a bookish vlog because today marks the beginning of the week of weird. Do, 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 do. So let's go to the short intro. When we come back, I'll tell you guys what I'm reading for the week of weird and we'll get right into the vlog. And Welcome back, guys. I must admit that last night I started the week of weird a little early. So late last night I started reading a couple of short stories, including a story in this collection. I read The Color Out of Space by H.P. Lovecraft, like I said, that came out of this collection. I also used audio, which was free on Scribd. Very enjoyable. Very, very interesting. Kind of old school, of course. And also, the movie with Nicolas Cage is very similar to the story itself. Of course, it's a little more graphic, it's a little more visual, because I feel like the story has a lot of implied weirdness. And weirdness that is described, but like, you know, it's not in extreme detail in some cases. But I also read another short story called The Willows by Algernon Blackwood. I really enjoyed that. 4.5 stars. I think Color Out of Space is also 4.5 stars for me. I'm not officially going to count The Color Out of Space in my books read because it's a short story. The Willows, they sell that as a Kindle, so I'm counting that because I got it free on Kindle and then I've got the audio free on Scribd, so since it's a standalone Kindle book, I am counting that one. Other books I'm reading for this week of weird will be, randomly I just added this in, The Haunting of Nicolas Cage by Marco Man Manoni. I'm probably saying that wrong. Anyway, this is very fun. This seems like a fiction story mixed with a non-fiction story because of course Nicolas Cage is a real person. He did actually buy a mansion in New Orleans, which this is, you know, kind of involved in the story as the mansion and him secluding himself in the mansion and writing. So he did buy the mansion, but, you know, he doesn't get haunted in real life, I don't think. Anyway, other books I'll be reading, The Cipher by Kathy Koja. I'll be buddy reading this with my friend Rachel later in the week. I'm very excited. I've had my eye on this book for a very long time. Finally, a great excuse to get to it. So The Cipher is about these two kind of annoying main characters, unhappy with life. They discover this weird hole in their apartment. They start sticking things in it. So, Cypher has to do with holes, and I'm also going to read Uzumaki, which has to do with spirals. So, holes and spirals, it's kind of like a theme or a mini theme of this vlog. So, that'll be kind of fun, seeing what, you know, weird shit can happen with holes and spirals, I guess. Also, I am in the middle. Last night, I started The River of Teeth by Sarah Gailey. So, in the middle of that, 25% in. Just to read you the description from Goodreads, it says, in the early 20th century, the United States government concocted a plan to import hippopotamuses into the marshlands of Louisiana to be bred and slaughtered as an alternative meat source. Contained within this volume is an 1890s America that might have been a bayou overrun by feral hippos and mercenary hippo wranglers from around the globe. So, so far it's very good, very unique, very odd, and it's kind of like set in like pioneer, like uh, olden times. So these are like cowboy type of dudes, but instead of riding horses, they're riding hippos and shit. So, and wrangling hippos. It's wonderful so far. Very, very unique. I heard about it from Crystal, by the way. This whole event is hosted by Crystal from Fiber Artsy and Jason from Jason's Weird Reads. Thank you guys for coming up with this awesome event. And last but not least, the last book I hope to get to this week, The Book of M, which I heard about from Michelle from Michelle's Library, and she said this book is weird. And she kept describing the plot to me, which had to do with people losing their shadows, but a whole bunch of other things. Also, it 
has a mix of genres in the book. So the way she described it, it definitely sounded appropriate for weird. And I commented and I was like, I think I might read this for the week of weird. She's like, oh my god, it's definitely weird. It would work. So yeah, I've added it. I have the audiobook and the ebook from Libby. So let's go. Let's go. Obviously, I'm going to continue on with River of Teeth. And besides that, today, I think I'm going to dig into the haunting of Nicolas Cage. So, yeah, this will be fun. All right, guys, I will check in with you later. <laughs> Chaos. I am. You both are very much so. 
Remember the time you played saxophone for me? Yes. <laughs> Channel 30 is sticking it out. They love us. I don't know what voice that was. I'm like, you had to run for president? They love us. They love us. Yeah, I don't know where that came from. Sorry. We're going to move on. <laughs> Your heart. That is not a heart shape. Out, so I you, that was an over. Okay. <laughs> Private county. <laughs> no. So we know my computer would explode if I added that. <laughs> you know, I never expected to be this drunk on the internet. Live, but it's time. <laughs> it's our bad influence. Like, Channel Thirty broadcaster was just one of Kelsey's other shows. <laughs> March 14th, as usual, I have to look over at the computer to figure out the freaking date, even though I should know it. So, it is a couple of days into the week of weird. So far, I've read what I already told you at the beginning, because I started early. I also read 50% of River of Teeth by Sarah Gailey, and that's decent, that's okay. It's a lot, it's fun concept, but I'm not, like, overly loving it. I am, however, 50% in as of yesterday of this book who's not, who, <laughs> of this book that was not even on my TBR to begin with. It's called Were Cage, as in werewolf, but Were Cage, C-A-G-E, as in Nicolas Cage, as a werewolf. <laughs> anyway, it's about, apparently, Nicolas Cage bites somebody, and then they turn into Nicolas Cage. And, like, they quote movie lines and stuff. 50% in, technically 48%, but almost 50. Anyway, freaking loving it. Such a great experience. It is actually way more heartfelt than I thought in that it has some relatable themes in the book about, you know, how much of a struggle it is to find yourself as a young adult, to find what you want to do in life, the struggle of, you know, oh, I haven't even begun to live yet, I haven't really done anything. So there's conversation around that because the main character is like a young man, like in his, you know, early to mid 20s, it sounds like. And, you know, he's dealing with this whole Nicolas Cage thing. And I actually really like that. The Nicolas Cage thing is funny. That's the great part that is like super weird, super funny. And it's a great concept because 
in it, because he's turned into Nicolas Cage, he's got these desires to, like, just quote Nicolas Cage movies, because he's becoming Nicolas Cage. Anyway, there's more to it than that. And there's different types of cages, like, this dog got bit by Nicolas Cage, and so he's calling him Little Cage, because he's, like, a mini version, because he's, like, dog size, but he's turning into Nicolas Cage, even though he's a dog. And he's wearing a collar and shit. Anyway, it's, it's great. I freaking am anticipating that this could be a four or a five. I don't know. We will see. But anyway, I am living my best weird life right now, and we will see what else I get up to. I've got a work meeting, so I have to go in like 10 minutes, but I am really, really, like I said, enjoying this. I am kind of going crazy in that I'm just adding things to my TBR that wasn't even a part of the TBR to begin with, which is fine. I know there's a lot of mood readers out there, but I usually like to stick to a plan, and I really want to get to some things like the Book of M, which is long. I don't know how I'm going to get to it this week and actually finish it. I'd love to get to that. I want to get to the other Nicolas Cage book that was actually on my TBR. The Wear Cage thing just came out of nowhere because someone commented about it on my <laughs> Instagram post, which I showed this in the post, and they were like, oh, I'm going to be reading Wear Cage. And I looked up the description and I said, I have to read this. Anyway, I haven't checked in since Sunday, and Sunday night I had the best time of all time, I was sprinting with Katrina and Amy and Andrew. Check out their channels. They will all be linked below. And then we went and crashed sprints with Lexi and Kaylee and freaking Cassidy. I will also link their channels. And I had the best time. Oh my god. I drank four drinks and was super, super tipsy. And it was just wild and unhinged in the best way. And then Sav joined us at the very end and it was amazing. So I love her too. She will also be linked below, as everyone will be. So yeah, I've had a great last couple of days. Yesterday wasn't super productive until like really late at night, so that's why I didn't really check in. And I was kind of dead during the morning hours since I was recovering from staying up till like 3 a.m. on sprints on Sunday night. Anyway, yeah, hopefully I can get more reading done starting today, but I will be doing sprints again tonight. And I am excited. I can't wait. It'll be on Katrina's channel. So woo! And Amy's going to be sprinting during the day for the week of weird. So lots of sprints going down, lots of fun, and lots of weird, which I like. See you guys later. It's me. I'm back checking in. It is a couple of days later. It's now Thursday, March 16th. I have been reading. Last night I finished Wear Cage, <laughs> which is about, of course, a Nicolas Cage werewolf type of situation. Hard to explain. Did it fit with the weird vibe for the week of weird? I think so. It was a lot of fun. I very much enjoyed it. I am giving that a 4.5, I think, because I just had a blast. Also, I am excited. I just started The Cypher by Kathy Koja yesterday. Fantastic! And I'm really pumped because I've been wanting to read this book for a long time. And essentially... Sorry, I'm getting a call. <laughs> okay, I'm back. Alright, sorry. <laughs> So I'm enjoying this. I'm about 95 pages in. It's a little over 350 pages total, right? Yeah. 
So, so far, I guess I'm over 25% at this point. At first, I struggled a little bit to get into the writing style, but then once I just got in the groove, I really started to like it because the tone of this is quite a bit different from something like Wear Cage, which is a lot different. <laughs> you know, obviously that's more of a humorous tone. This is more of an off-putting, weird, disturbing tone. And we've got these two people, they just seem like kind of unhappy young adults who are just, you know, drifting through life. They're artists. And so I have enjoyed it. But again, at first they were a little snippy and snotty seeming, but then I got used to it. I will say I'm using audio along with reading physically, and I'm liking that a lot. I think that's a good method to stick with. So, so far this is good. Will it turn out to be a four or five star? My friend Katrina just finished this, and she loves it. It's like a new favorite of hers. So will I kind of fall in line and agree with her or will I disagree? I guess we'll have to wait and see. I know my friend Crystal also likes this, so only time will tell. I'm gonna read more. I'm on sprints with Lexi, Kaylee, Katrina, Erin, so I'm gonna link all of them below. You guys should check them out if you haven't already. Awesome. All right, guys, so talk to you later when I've got something more to update about. <laughs> I don't know why I'm making that noise. Bye! <laughs>did finish the cipher last night. It's a couple of days later. Paul and I had to drive up to Alabama because he had work. That was on St. Patty's Day, so he worked. I hung in the hotel, and we watched some awesome Irish music at night, and then we drove back today. But yeah, in the hotel room last night, I finished the cipher. So good, so bleak. Reminds me of The Driller Killer, which is a movie think from the 70s. It's really grungy. It's about these artsy people. One guy in particular is like a painter and he's living with these two other women who are kind of, one's his girlfriend and the other one, I don't know if she's an artist or just a friend, whatever. The movie isn't good, but at the same time, there are some parts that are worth seeing. There's also a disgusting pizza eating scene, which, I don't know, the way he eats the pizza is just so gross. It's not like horror or anything in terms of what's happening with the pizza. It's just a gross way of eating pizza. Anyway, the grunginess of that movie reminds me so much of The Cypher, or vice versa. The Cypher reminds me of that movie, because I saw the movie first. Anyway, yeah, I love this. So bleak. Wouldn't be for everyone. I could see why not everyone absolutely loves it, but for me, this was definitely five stars. Just to recap a little bit, these two artsy people, uh, they have a strained relationship. They've you know, been together in the past, but they're definitely not uh, in a healthy relationship of any kind. They are just really weird people, really unhappy, unsatisfied with life, kind of cynical. Anyway, all of a sudden they notice that there's a hole, a black hole, downstairs in their apartment building in this storage room, and they start to spend a lot of time there. They put things in it, just to experiment with what's happening and so on and so forth. Very odd. But yeah, fantastic. Uh, there are some elements, like I said, that wouldn't be for everybody. It did take me a little bit to get into the writing style, but I'm so glad I read this. This, I really should have read this a long time ago because to me this is like an essential read if you're talking about classic 90s horror. This is something that I feel like people have to read when you talk about, I want to read more vintage horror from the 80s and 90s. This should be one of the titles you check out and see how you feel about it. So yay, I did it. I did it. I left my book. Whoa, I left two bookmarks in there. So I can't talk long. I'm waiting on dinner. And after dinner, I'm going to be recording a drunken audio commentary track with my friend Andrew from It Came From The Page. Check out his channel. We'll be watching Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, the movie. I've got two Power Ranger shirts on. Two, because it's cold. So a regular shirt and a sweatshirt. But yeah. You'd think one would be enough. We're also going to watch Grizzly, which is like a 70s movie about a grizzly bear. That's supposedly really bad. So we're going to be even more crunk by the time we watch that one. And hopefully the commentary will be funny. It's for my Patreon channel. <laughs> it was his idea. Fantastic idea. He's the best. Anyway, please, please check out his channel if you haven't already. What's left on my weird TBR is The Haunting of Nicolas Cage, The Book of M, 
and Uzumaki. So I really want to get to those three, but technically today is the last day of the week of weird. I will be unofficially extending it for another week, so you guys will see more vlog clips after this. But... I'm not going to be vlogging anymore the rest of the weekend because I'm actually, before I continue on with the week of weird unofficially, I am going to freaking read an Irish thematic book because of St. Patrick's Day yesterday. Because Paul and I were like in a hotel and he had work and we didn't get to celebrate to the, you know, to the max, we are going to have a weekend St. Patty's Day, or St. Patty's Weekend. So we are making Irish stew tomorrow. We are going to uh, an Italian Irish parade. We are also going to make Bailey's cheesecake. So yeah, we are doing it up. We might watch a Dropkick Murphy show, which is a Celtic punk band that I love. Later, we also listen to Flogging Molly on the trip home, which is another Celtic punk band that I love. And we watched The Tossers last night, which is another Celtic punk band that I love. We watched a show on YouTube at the very end of the night after I was done with the cipher. All right, guys, that's basically my update. I will get back with you guys once I dive back into my weird reads. <laughs> that was a literal dive. All right, goodbye. <laughs> something weird no it's this is for my vlog the week of weird you got to do something weird just make up something weird i don't know like blah, blah. come on do something real weird just be weird well you are weird so just be yourself i guess uh, Hello, I am outside chilling, smoking a cigar. I only do this once every couple of months, so I'm not an advocate for smoking. But yes, sometimes a nice flavored cigar. Every couple of months is kind of nice. And I'm practicing. I'm practicing my mops the ways because when it comes to April, Bertrand and the other blue barracudas on my team, Everyone else, they're gonna be sleeping with the fishes. Anybody going against us, you better watch out because the fishes, they are vicious. We are coming for you. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> that's dumb. Anyway, I'm about 260 something pages into Uzumaki. Loving it. The illustrations, amazing. I'm gonna read more. I just got done Patreon sprint with my friend, of course, Andrew. It came from the page, and I think I'm out of focus here. Come on now. Here we go. That's better. Oh, my whole rant was out of focus. That sucks. Having a nice little Jameson and ginger ale. Yeah. Cherry flavor. Anyway, yeah, there's some really creepy stuff. The illustrations are just haunting. Like, Stuff with a snail uh, is really terrifying. You know, it's funny that I can even smoke this and not see like rings of smoke and go all crazy. Like, it makes rings. <laughs> and then like my eyes going different ways. Cause one character, his eyes were spinning two different ways. And that whole idea is just very creepy to me for some reason. All right guys, that is my check-in outside with this fire pit. There's Jackson off in the distance. I will catch up with you guys later.
Hey again, guys! It's been quite a few days. Like, quite a few days. What have I done in the last few days? I finished Uzumaki, I started and finished The Haunting of Nicolas Cage, and I went to Lake Charles, Louisiana, and came back. That's how much happened in the last couple of days. Just so you guys know, I'm wearing this awesome shirt. Every day is Halloween! My friend Elizabeth gave me this. Check out her channel, Elizabeth Sagewood. She's one of my co-hosts for my upcoming readathon and watchathon, Old School April. As are a lot of people I've mentioned in this video. I bought something for freaking Old School April. <laughs> April. <laughs> Credit card. You got it. <laughs> I did prank calls at one of our other readathon like live stream parties and yeah i kept saying credit card you got it with a voice modulator so i had to get a freaking shirt that says credit card you got it one because i love home alone two because of the prank calls where i actually freaking replicated <laughs> the talk girl talk boy thing i had a talk girl a talk boy segment and with my own voice modulator it was awesome i'm all tongue twisted because i'm tired as hell also, I'm just excited about Old School April, which is around the corner. It's less than a week away now. I also received my Criminali shirt in the mail. Crime and Pulp and Horror. Uh, he does have one that says that kind of thing. This one says that kind of thing on the back, which I do like. Crime and Pulp and Horror, that kind of thing. <laughs> I like it. Check out Ollie's channel if you haven't already. He's fantastic. Criminali is the channel. And he also has a fantastic Patreon that I support. All right, guys, yeah, lots has happened. Let me update you on the books. So first, Uzumaki, which was the first thing I finished. Let's take a look here. Dun, 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 dun. Very enjoyable, gave it four stars. You know, I don't know if I'm gonna be a full-time manga person. I love the, the flippin' drawing. I love the illustration. I just sometimes wish there was more with the, like, text. I know that's not the point, though. The point is the illustrations. The illustrations in this are fantastic. You can't beat it, it's incredible. Uh, that alone was worth five stars, but, you know, because I wasn't overly enamored with the text and the writing and the dialogue of the characters, then I think I'm giving it a four. But yeah, overall, very enjoyable, easy to read, haunting images, like very, very disturbing, things that will stay with me for a long time. It was a little long, I think it could have been shorter, because some things repeated where these spirals were getting into people's head and doing weird things, and that kept repeating a lot at the end especially, it felt like. But overall, I very much enjoyed it. I don't really have too many complaints at all. All right, next up, started and finished The Haunting of Nicolas Cage. I don't know what it is, but Nicolas Cage books are freaking badass, apparently. Like, you should get them if you don't already have them. So the other one I read was Wear Cage earlier in this vlog. I loved it, 4.5. This is also a 4.5, very different in tone, more serious, but still absurd. These are more absurdist books, I think, than weird, but I'm counting them for the week of weird or the two week of weird because I extended my week of weird to two weeks, but whatever. It's unofficial, but I'm so glad I did because, yeah, Uzumaki in this, well worth the reads. I, I had such a blast. This, you got Nicolas Cage. He is in the mansion that he bought. So that part is real. He bought like this creepy old school mansion where this woman tortured slaves. It's terrible. And... He, I don't know how long he kept it, but he only stayed there for, like, not even a full night, and he left, and he was freaked out. I think he was planning to write a book there. Anyway, this, he's actually staying there for a while in New Orleans, which is so cool because that's where I'm from. That's where I'm filming this currently, just outside of New Orleans in this little place called Harahan. And Harahan is mentioned at the back of the book, like, near the end, because there's a real estate agent, and she's selling a property in Harahan. Anyway, the real estate agent is a freaking descendant of... Madame Laveau, and she's like a famous voodoo priestess or whatever, so she helped Nicolas Cage with this haunting of the mansion and trying to clean it out, and it's fantastic. It's really, really just a ball. I loved it. You know, you can't take these books too seriously. Are they perfect? No. These are indie books, this and Wear Cage. You know, uh, there was a typo here and there, but I freaking think the premise of it, very unique, very fun, just worth reading if you like having a good time with your reading, if you don't want everything to be Shakespeare, if you don't want everything to give you some kind of meaning and message in the world, I feel like this and Wear Cage were fantastic. Both, like, it's hard to pick a favorite. I think I like Wear Cage a little bit better than this one, just because it was a little bit more absurd, but this one was fantastic too, and it was great to see my city represented in the pages, and whoever 
wrote this did a very good job. Well, I know who wrote it, Marco. <laughs> Marco did a good job capturing the vibe of the city. And actually, the funny thing is, I read two books that actually mentioned some parts of hoodoo slash voodoo this month. The Good House and this. This mentions hoodoo slash voodoo. They call it voodoo, but it's really like hoodoo, which is from Haiti, which I learned about when I read The Serpent and the Rainbow. This is a nonfiction book about, like, you know, the the worship of hoodoo in Haiti, which I learned a lot. The Good House has hoodoo talked about in it, and this guy named Papa Legba. Papa Legba is in this. I was like, oh my god, what are the chances that I read The Good House and The Haunting of Nicolas Cage in the same freaking month, and it references the same freaking hoodoo guy. Hoodoo voodoo, I don't know, really. I'm still a little foggy on it, even though I learned a lot from Serpent in the Rainbow and from The Good House, actually. But fantastic stuff, so fascinating. And so cool and coincidental that I read two books that mentions the Papa Legba guy. I'm probably saying his name wrong. Anyway, fantastic vlog. This was part of my major part of the TBR was the Cypher, the whole thing of Nicolas Cage and Uzumaki. I completed it. I never completed the uh, River of Teeth by Sarah Gailey. I'm not officially DNFing it forever. I just am going to take a break on it finish it like at another time I think. I was 50% into that. I read Wear Cage which was an unexpected add to my TBR. I read The Color Out of Space right before the vlog began. I also read The Willows by Algernon Blackwood. Thought that was fan freaking fantastic. Really loved it. Apparently it's very similar to The Hollow Places by T. Kingfisher. She took inspiration from The Willows so I can't wait to now read The Hollow Places because that's on my 23 books to read in 2023 list, or at least one of my lists for this year. So that's going to be awesome and very cool just to see the contrast and the comparisons between the two stories. So yeah, that's going to be interesting. I never got to the book of M, which sucks. I really wanted to get to that really bad. My friend Michelle from Michelle's Library told me about that. I will have to get to it later in the year. I never got to... What else was on my list I didn't get to? Um... There were some things I even checked out from the library besides the Book of M that I didn't get to. There were so many weird things I've learned that I want to read. So this time next year, I cannot wait. I'm going to make a bigger TBR for the Week of Weird, and I might even do it for half the month. But I heard Crystal might do it again this very year, later in the year, like maybe September. Thank you so much to Crystal at Fiber Artsy. Check out her channel. And also Jason from Jason's Weird Reads for hosting this fantastic, fantastic readathon. I didn't know I liked weird fiction. Now I do know. And I can't wait to go ham next year. All right guys that is it also by the way i hope you enjoyed seeing me put together that freaking bookcase i got you can't see it i got a freaking blister look at this discoloration here i got a blister they give you gloves i was like why are there gloves in this package because they want you to use the gloves to put all the screws in the freaking bookcase anyway i put that together it took forever i also rearranged all of my books this week um i didn't get footage of the bookcases in here that i rearranged i was afraid that I would start to get sun damage on my books that are on my spinny thing. I've got like a spinny carousel thing that I got for $5 from Hallmark when they were going out of business. So I've had the same books on there for like two years and the window is nearby and I try to spin it so that like each, you know, different side is facing the window every couple of days or every couple of weeks. But still, I was like, to be safe, I want to take off all the books that were on there for years and give them a rest, put them on a shelf protect them from the sun. So I, I don't like it as much because I had some of my favorite covers on the spinny thing, but I had to protect them. I was like, I don't want them to get some sun damage at all and to fade or whatever. So I did that. I put some books on my bookshelf I built that you guys saw, and that was basically for my TBR. Like I'm putting my last month's read on there, my current month's reads on there, and next month's reads on there. So it's a TBR card of sorts so that I can keep books that I'm going to, you know, film videos about on there, like my wrap up, my TBR, and then books that I'm currently reading. I didn't have a place in my room for piles of books like that. So now I'm keeping that in the other room by my bed. So if I want to read something, it's there. Also my TBR books that are coming up, they're out of the way. Also the books that I just read that I need to film a wrap up on, those are out of the way. They're not in my room, crowding my room, my office room, I should say. They're just in my bedroom, which doesn't matter. Also, I rearranged my really, really messy, I wish I would have taken it before, I only took it after. I rearranged where I keep my newer books in my bedroom. I like to keep all my vintage books in this room because I can control the environment in this room. My window is never open in here. 
the window in our bedroom is open, newer books, it's not as big of a deal to me. You know, they, they are printed on better paper, more protected. I'm not as worried about, you know, the newer books as I am about the vintage books. That's why where I can control the environment, that's why these books are in here because I want to protect them as much as I can. All right, this has been a lengthy wrap up, but I wanted to give you guys the rundown of everything that's been going down the last couple of freaking days. All right, guys, though, that is it for me. Thank you so much for sticking with me. I really appreciate you guys giving me your time. And if you're new here, welcome, welcome. I hope you subscribe because we've got lots of fun coming up in April. I've been a little bit slow with my videos this month, but I'm going to ramp up next month. Lots of vlogs, some prepared videos, but it's going to be a lot of vlogging. I'm going to be very busy. I am so excited. Who is joining in for Old School April? Let me know. Comment below. I can't wait. I can't wait. It's going to be so fun. All right, guys. Like I said, this is it for me. Till next time, you guys know what you can do. Keep on killing it. Bye, guys.